Hey guys, I just wanted to share with you a quick video. Um, as essentially, for in my preparation for my interviews, I've not only been preparing with coding interview questions, but also system design um, style of questions. So, what is a system design design interview? You're basically um, getting asked by the interviewer how to design a scalable web website, web application, web infrastructure, or service. So, it's essentially. Um, all it is is information gathering interview so you basically clarify a lot of like your assumptions so hey how many users do we have to have to um, serve how much information is going to be stored per user um, what are the priorities on the features like is something more important than than other things so it's basically a bunch of decision making designing and from that decision making um, ranking the trade-offs and seeing what is the best system for that particular use case. So in terms of um, actual um, actual trade-offs, uh, usually you hear a lot about a CAP theorem. So let's just do like a little triangle. So CAP theorem stands for consistency, um, availability, and partition tolerance. So if we just do P right here, A right here, and consistency right here. Uh, basically, um, what the theorem states is that out of the, these three things, consistency, availability, and partition tolerance, usually with your distributed system, you can only choose two. So usually with these types of databases, you'll have a couple on this side, a couple on here. So for consistency and availability, you're gonna get more of your SQL databases like Oops, like MySQL, PostgreSQL for availability and partition tolerance, I believe. Um, that can be something like uh, Cassandra. Um, and then for consistency and partition tolerance, that's something like HBase. Uh, so, oh, and uh, MongoDB. Um, but basically, like this is just one aspect of the trade-offs. Um, another aspect could be how many write and read queries you're going to have with your data? So, so, right, okay. All right, let's just do text. Write versus read queries. So, depending on the nature of your service, um, your data. Um, might have changed data a lot, so that'd be more read-heavy service. Um, certain, certain types of data just would be read disproportionately from others. So if you like try to design Twitter, for example, you might have a lot of read queries uh, because a lot of people are reading different tweets. So maybe your average user reads, I don't know, 50 tweets per um, login session, and they only write uh, a tweet every day. Maybe they write a tweet on average every day. So you would actually scale your service depending on that one of those. I mean, on that consideration plus a ton of others. Um, also, the amount of data you're going to store, what type of data you're going to store, the, um, the data model you want to construct that's the most efficient for your use case. So you, you basically just ask and uh, um, ask the interviewer questions and clarify those assumptions. So um, I'm not perfect <laughs> um, at all in this uh, type of interview. But you also just want to high level explain like what's happening. So from the client uh, using your website, from the client using your website. So maybe like you just have like a simple diagram. So this is like the client. Their request goes to a couple of your servers. So maybe in the server, you know you're going to handle a lot of traffic. You have like hundreds of millions of users. So you might use something what's known as a load balancer. Okay. What is a load balancer? Basically, um, it's a service that is able to distribute distribute the traffic um, uniformly, uh, where no one single server is um, handling unfairly the, the traffic. So uh, one server doesn't become hot, as, as they, they call it. So let's say you have 10 servers, and then based on the type of data that's getting uh, kind of uh, funneled in there like out of the one server out of the 10 is just handling all the traffic while all the other servers uh, Essentially are, are idle. So what the load balancer does is they use consistent hashing 
um, hash based partitioning where they can like uh, funnel that traffic evenly or as uniformly distributed as possible um, where one server is not handling all the load. Um, and that's just one concept. Uh, you have other concepts like, hey, um, instead of having to do like longer uh, read queries from the database, um, if you know that certain uh, portion of the data frequently gets accessed by the, the, the client or customer, maybe that's 20% of the data, you can use caches. So it is actually faster to read a cache um, on the key value store than it is to um, basically um, issue transactions on a database. So that's something you might want to include um, in the, the in-between layer between um, one service and a different service like on your database layer. So again, all these like little um, um, considerations and trade-offs that you, you're gonna have to use. Um, and again, that's just one type of consideration. You can also consider the different types of databases um, and information stores uh, that you can hold. Um, do you want something that um, has consistency and um, atomicity uh, for your data? Um, or uh, is it fine that your data is eventually consistent? Um, like for stock trading apps or something like that, you would want like any type of read write query to be just updated immediately and there w was no possible chance of like a currency issue or data um, basically showing a past version of itself. So all a lot of great things to consider. The best way to learn about this stuff is just use like resources about system design. Um, I'll include a couple in the description, but essentially there's a, a couple good ones. Uh, Systems Expert is like pretty good. I've learned a lot from there. Garaki in the System uh, Interview on Educative.io I've been using for my interview prep. And then also um, there's a free GitHub repository that basically goes through a list of problems and key concepts on understanding how to basically scale out your web applications and prepare for these interviews. So overall, I hope this was a little helpful. I'm still figuring it out myself and I wish you luck on your future technical interviews as well. Thanks.